Hello everybody and welcome back to Outcast Studios. I hope you've all had a good day today. I've been alright, I suppose. But yes, welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of Anadonia. We've got a luck plan for today. And by that I mean another one of the upgrades to the AB storage system. Don't worry, we're nearly on our way finished with them now. But before any of that, we have to get to this interesting little thing over here. Bet you haven't seen this before. That's because uh, I built this as part of a time lapse. So what I'm going to do, and before you ask, no, it's it's not a replay mod one, sadly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play you almost like, you know, the uh, Lego games where they build the stuff and it's got the click, 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 click sound to it. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that but with this, and we'll cut in as we get to specific important points of building this. So, uh, yeah, maestro, if you please. One hour later. hours later. Three hours later. There we go. Hopefully that turned out well. Now, do you know something very funny about that time lapse? See, the thing that's funny is that the inside looks nothing like what I did in that time lapse at all. Because, um, so here's the thing. I sat down and did that that you just saw for about five hours. After that point, however, my hard drive got full. And so it just didn't record the next three hours of me reorganizing the room. Yes, even when I'm not using the replay mod, uh, things just don't go my way. As for why I decided to do all of this in a time lapse, the answer is very simple. It's that, like I mentioned, this took eight hours total. And while normally I would put this into a video, make it its own thing, to be honest, I didn't want to do that for two reasons. Number one is it's not actually finished. We still have, obviously, a lot more of this place to finish. But number two is that I didn't want to interrupt the flow of the upgrading series, quote unquote. I guess you could call it a mini series, where we go session by session to gradually increase one of these. The third thing is it's all stuff that you've seen me do before. None of this is new. I've built all of this before. I've shown you how I get so many of them. I've done everything. All you, you're missing is the actual building part. And to be honest, you're certainly not going to be missing out on that today. I promise you that. So with that in mind, let's get on with today's tasks. Now, today's first task does involve us coming into the machine room, despite the fact that it is not the next step of upgrading our storage components. Now, the next step is to actually figure out what the hell is wrong with this system here. Because despite the fact that this line has glowstone on, don't let that fool you. This system isn't working properly. It's not splitting the glowstone down here no matter what I do. And I know it's not a stagnation issue. Because in between episodes, in order to fix the stagnation issue, I did this. I set up right here, we have a funnel system going into two storage drawers that have void upgrades on them, okay? Now, storage drawers and void upgrades, very cheap. The storage drawer is just six pieces of wood in a chest. The void upgrade is just eight obsidian and an upgrade template, which again is just sticks and a plank. Well, actually, it's a drawer, but... You know, they look basically identical. So what we're going to do as our first task is we're going to fix this issue. Not by messing with these tunnels, well, we are going to be messing with the tunnel slightly. But instead, it's going to be by merging the lanes into one. What I'm going to do, instead of having these individual tunnels all the way along dotted on each individual point, I'm just going to have two here that's going to thread both the glowstone and the redstone into one mechanical belt. Then I'm going to have these tunnels put sideways on like they are over here to funnel out the specific one needed 
at the specific points. But of course, in order to do that, I am going to have to turn off the movement and clear out all of this redstone and glowstone, which is going to get very messy. But in the effort of stopping talking about it and actually starting doing it, let's get started. This part of the track does, of course, still have to exist, however. And then the tunnels go here. See? They're connected. The third tunnel must go here, completely unconnected from the series. And this one must be filtered to purely glowstone, as must this one. This one, however, must only allow redstone. And the same goes of this one. And I think putting this back here might be the solution that we're looking for. Add the tunnels. Redstone limit, glowstone limit. Now to see if it works. Why is that even an option? Let's make it not. From this point onwards, it doesn't matter what side of the conveyor belt it's on because it will automatically sort anything that comes into it. And then from there, like I said, all I have to do is power this side of it, which, as this is now moving, means all I have to do is link it in to the rest of the system. Looking at it now, it seems as if the system is working. The redstone is being allowed to pass through into the sides that it needs them on, and the glowstone is also being put out where it needs to be. Brilliant! So, we have fixed the issue. This is great. I'm gonna go grab the brass casings to fill in the uh, parts of the conveyor belt that I've had to replace, or add, or just haven't converted into looking like this yet for some reason, and then... We can move on to the next part of today's session. Although, now that I'm looking at this as I'm about to leave to go to the next session, I believe I'm starting to see a bit of an issue <laughs> with the system. In that it is primarily, entirely dominated by glowstone. Hopefully that won't become an issue later down the line. If it does, I may have to slow down glowstone production. Either way, if you'll follow me on to the next part of today's uh, task list, we're back in this room again. And the reason for that is quite simple. This is a really good production line, but you know what it's missing? See this? Do you remember this? This tiny thing here? We need to do this on a massive scale. We need to take the output from the, from the device, from the giant mechanism we've got over there, and basically plug it in to a bigger version of this. One of them has got to lead all the way down here into this box, or rather into the bigger charging system that we're about to set up, which will then funnel into here. And the other one has to be able to be sent on this adventure through this part of the system here to wind up over there. But the reason we need a charging room is because this is heavily bottlenecked by how quickly this can both charge Surtis Quartz and then deposit it into this box here, especially because we can't actually upgrade the charger in terms of speed. We could use a watch of flowing time, but those lag out the game, and we're already using them plenty enough all around the workshop, see? So I don't want to rely on them too heavily as a crutch. So it seems the action we must take is pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out all of this space. I'm going to I'm going to knock out this back wall. I'm going to set it all the way back, really far back, so that we can fill it up with a bunch of charging modules. And I'll get back to you once I've cleared out the space. Oh, that could have been so incredibly bad. That could have been astronomically bad. It was kind of astronomically bad. Oh no. Oh, I thought we were low enough. Ah. Right, well, I've got to fix this now. Judging from the fact that uh, there is wind going up through the pipe again, I'm going to assume I fixed that. And uh, the only reason it's not going up is because, you know, the conveyor belt is full, but um, still. Oopsies. <laughs> Not even going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. So before we move on to the next part where I go over there and I, I sort out the uh, storage drive, the next storage drive component, uh, I'm just going to hop in here very quickly because I, I, I've just realized that I forgot to explain any of this. I've just cut out nearly an hour, two hours worth of footage from this video. Uh, because this wasn't the first design I made. What ended up happening was I went through two different designs, both of them failed for different reasons, and then I did this in between episodes after saying I would fix it. So rather than just show you all of that, I figured I'd just explain how this works now before we move on to the next part of, you know, this session. Uh, so, if we just come in here very quickly, 
obviously you can see we've got the conveyor belts that are outputting uh, quartz onto this side. This one does not exist yet. Ignore this one. I'm a time traveler, sometimes things happen out of order. But this one here pumps all of the quartz that comes in onto here, where it then comes down this set of uh, chutes here. And it comes all the way down, all the way down, until it gets onto this conveyor belt here. Once it comes through this conveyor belt, it then goes through a set of tunnels that go all the way to the very edge of this area, if we just crouch all the way over here. And once it gets to the end, it then gets funneled down these lanes. Now, when it gets funneled down these lanes, it gets funneled into the brass funnels, uh, which lead to these charges, which go all the way down here. As you can see, we're actually kind of backed up here because these ones are currently full. Now, what happens then is, after these get charged, they actually get sucked up through these smart chutes that only accept the charged Surtis Quartz, okay? And when they get sucked up, if we just come back here, they get sucked into these chutes here, which then output using these andesite funnels onto this set of belts, okay? And this set of belts actually takes that output and then takes it all the way over to this set of chutes here, which sucks the output up and onto this mechanical belt, which then takes the charged Sodus Quartz into this set of chutes right here. Once it comes through that chute, it appears on this conveyor belt here, and it gets dragged all the way along here through this sort of, I guess, back alley sort of area. It's more of just a, a behind the scenes little cubby hole. Ignore this, this is some uh, more stuff. Uh, it comes all the way up here, where it then gets fed out, if I can get off the conveyor belt, of this brass tunnel here. Once again, ignore this second line, this doesn't exist yet, but it then gets fed onto this mechanical belt and through this last funnel here, before winding up in this netherite barrel right here, which then gets pulled onto the crafting grid. And of course, all of this is powered by the windmills outside, and as you may have seen when we were down there, the charges are being powered from below using some advanced cabling, which actually runs through this wall here. It actually runs all the way along here on the very edge of the building and actually almost intersects with the ME cabling, which is pretty funny. And of course, all of that is being powered by these solar panels right here that take up just a small corner of the roof of this building. Either way, with that mentioned, explained and out of the way, like I said, time to move on to the next Next stage of today's episode, which, as you might have guessed, is, you know, this. The next one of this. Alright, you know the drill by now. Let's do it over here. Okay, and to just hop back in before I go any further, because I don't want to do the whole thing without at least some commentary before the end. Uh, I just want to show you guys what it's starting to look like. I'm going for the mirrored approach uh, as best I can. Um, unfortunately, flipping it does kind of ruin the mirror because this in itself is not uh, an even number. It's an odd number. Uh, so I went with the option of putting them on the same block level so that I didn't have to do something weird with... Uh, the lanes, but because of that, uh, and obviously having to travel that way instead of this way, the netherite barrel has to be on this side, and the cog, in order to make sure it's not under the barrel, is uh, going to have to be moved to this side of the room. Uh, that aside though, it was a little tricky to get it running, but I have got the system, well, running. Uh, what we have here, we have the glowstone and redstone line, which is Admittedly, a little more glowstone than redstone, and a little more redstone than glowstone over here. I'm still struggling to find a balance there. Um, that couldn't actually turn off this way by having two tunnels here, so I had to strike the tunnels out di uh, straight, uh, straightforward, which takes the redstone and glowstone and puts them on a random conveyor belt before this then reorganizes them down into this side by making it so that only the uh, one million storage component can come through this one. Uh, which is obviously being dragged out of this barrel here, along this conveyor belt here. Uh, once we get to the two tunnels, uh, this one uh, obviously only allows the 1k storage component in and allows nothing through this side, so it has to go into this one, 
and this one only allows glowstone through this part, so it then has to come out of this side. Now this one only allows the 1 million through this side, so the 1 million comes through here, and the glowstone and redstone that are coming through then get funneled through here. And obviously we do still have the quartz glass from up top, which is being moved along this way and down here. So, last thing we've got to do is we've got to hook this up to the main system, which should... Actually, I think we might have to add another windmill if we're going to hook this up, because, I mean, hooking up uh, that whole device over there has already put a drain on the system after hooking them all together into one. So yeah, hook it up, build another windmill, and then we should be done with this area, and that'll leave us only with one last task that I want to get done today. Today's episode is turning out to be a long one. Oh, now that is a lovely little surprise right there. Turns out we didn't at all need to update the windmill system. Apparently, just connecting them all together and having the thing turned down to avoid overstressing over there has somehow meant that this one is perfectly fine running at the speed it's running. I'm genuinely shocked. Um, and as you can see, it has already begun the crafting process. I mean, right here. We have six 4 million ME storage components. That is brilliant. Insane, but brilliant. Um, and obviously, you know, we ran out of 1 million, so that needs to do its thing over there. Uh, but the point still stands. We have successfully gotten ourselves up to the 4 million ME storage component, which means in the next session, we will have finally made the 16 million storage component. And it feels like I've done my math wrong about that somewhere, but I so very clearly haven't. So if the 16 million one goes there, then that means we've got one, two, three spaces just completely free that we weren't gonna end up using, even though when I did this calculation last time, we had the perfect amount. Plus or minus the extra one that I'm keeping a surprise. I'm not mad, it's just weird that I got the math wrong and I can't tell when. Either way, with the successful completion of this step of the plan, all we have left to do in this session before we finish off is something that I should have done a very long time ago. And surprisingly, it's not finished the roof of this area. No, no, what I want to finish up on today, what I want to get done before we finish off, is I actually want to light up this part of our base. I mean, god, the rendering, what the hell is happening? I honestly don't know how to fix that. Um, but yeah, if you cast your minds back, I went over this top area of the base, which we haven't even gotten to use yet, to be completely honest, and I just put a bunch of glowstone in the ground, covered it with some lime carpet, just to stop mobs from spawning in our base. Obviously they can still spawn on the mountains, because I haven't lit that area up. That, that's, that's weird. That's very weird. But one thing you'll have noticed, or at least you might have noticed if I included it in the video, still not sure if I have or not, is that I'm getting constantly harassed when I am trying to do anything in this part of the base, okay? There are constantly mobs spawning. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do what we did up here and we're just gonna go around and put as much glowstone down as we can to cover up all of the areas that mobs can spawn in. So Maestro, play that funky music, white boy. And it is with that last block of glowstone that we are finishing off this session for the day. Partially because, you know, we're done. But also mainly because it's 7am and I should have been asleep two hours ago. And I have work soon. But yeah, so if you did enjoy today's video of Anadonia, make sure to leave a like down below. If you want to tell me something about today's video or something about something I've done in today's video or you just want to say hello, then leave a comment down below. And, you know, remember to subscribe if you enjoy my personality and my massive tip. And, uh, yeah, in case I don't see you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. Bye 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 bye